Hey, ta, matandazi, hey, ta. I hope you had a wonderful festive season. And neboile. Well, the ANC elective conference, which was scheduled to take place in Nazareth from the 16th to the 20th of December 2022, finally came and passed. And still, the undisputed and Ramaphosa was re-elected and is still the president of the ANC. In this video, we look into how he won despite having his back against the wall before the conference. And the KZN delegates booing him, banging tables, screaming for change and humiliating him as he delivered his speech for the political report. But before we get into that, please subscribe, like or dislike this video and leave a comment at the end. It helps this channel to grow and motivates me to research and release more informative videos like this one. The next video I'm working on is an explainer video on how the whole Palapala saga happened from the beginning. So please subscribe and hit the notification notification bell so that you do not miss it when I upload it in the next two weeks. Now back to Nazrak. So during the build up to the conference Ramaphosa's back was against the wall so badly that he even attempted to resign as the president of the country and withdraw from the presidential race of the ANC. This was because on the 30th of November a section 89 report that concluded that Ramaphosa had a case to answer regarding the Palapala robbery was published and Ramaphosa was ready to resign the following day. The resignation speech was already written and the time for him to address the nation and announce his resignation was already set until a group called the Chris Anika Bal led by Kwete Mandashe and consisting of Kwen Ramokhopa, Ronald Lamola, Eno Kotongwane, Oscar Mabuyane, Munch Kungubele, Zamani Saul, Derek Enekom and Zizu Goto caught wind of the intended resignation and went to visit President Ramaphosa at his home, tore up that resignation speech and told him to get in the mud and fight. Their first fight back strategy was to embark on a media tour and poke holes in the report to divide public opinion, which they did successfully. I've read the report. Uh, therefore, any view I express on the report will be my view. Uh, I think uh, it, it is a report, it, it, it is having a lot of loopholes, it can be challenged. I have, I have listened to the, those voices, after it's the same people who have been saying that for more than two years now. So it's not new when it comes to this from the same people. Uh, when we go to the NSC, we'll be more or likely to hear voices that are fresh on the issue. Those people who stand up and say, hey, go now, go now, they've been saying that for two years. Uh, and actually, they never accepted the outcome of the 54th National Conference. If I am indeed found by any court and so forth, he has said it even to the media, that I will consider stepping down. But as we speak now, he is taking the report on review. So I do think that let's allow so that to process. So he's definitely taking... The report he, he, he is consulting with his lawyers, so I do believe that it's clear the report is flawed. They then advised President Ramaphosa to take the report on judicial review. Later that day, the president's spokesperson Vincent Mangwenya announced that the schedule addressed by the president where it was speculated that he'd announced his resignation had been cancelled. Paul Mashatile, who was a treasurer general and acting as secretary general at the time, called an emergency NEC meeting to discuss the report, which Ramaphosa didn't attend, and the meeting was adjourned before it even started because of that and the fact that it had to be discussed by the National Working Committee first. The meeting finally convened on the 5th of December 2022 and resolved that the adoption of the panel report be opposed in Parliament. The NEC resolved that the NEC will vote against the adoption of the report of the section 89 panel given the fact that the report has now been taken on review by the president so we thought we are going to leave it there for now uh, should parliament proceed tomorrow uh, the ANC will not uh, support that report that's that's our conclusion Kwete Mandashe in his capacity as chairperson of the ANC chaired that meeting and Ramaphosa's detractors were not happy with the way he conducted it and the conclusion to oppose the report as they claimed they were not given an opportunity to speak and debate and accused Kwete Mandashe of pulling them to toe a party line and defend Ramaphosa by voting against the adoption of the panel report. It was then rumored that 45 of these disgruntled NEC members who are also MPs would vote with the opposition in parliament in favor of the report. The ATM and UDM in parliament then tried to apply for a secret ballot hoping that more ANC members would vote in favor of the 
report if the vote was conducted in secret. In their applications, they claimed that members were being intimidated and their lives and livelihoods were threatened. Some politicians, such as Wolomisa, even shared screenshots of threatening messages sent to them. But there were counterclaims that they actually sent those messages to themselves as an attempt to falsely substantiate their intimidation claims and influence Mampisa Ngagula's decision regarding the secret ballot request. But that did not work as Mampisa Ngagula rejected their application for a secret ballot and maintained that the vote was to be conducted in public. On the 13th of December, the parliament convened and debated whether to adopt or reject the panel report. The ANC fielded Ronald Lamola who took to the podium and poked even more holes into the report. If they still needed further information, we could not be sitting here doubting the process of the panel, its content and its outcomes. And there is one clear demonstrable example in the panel's report. They cite a Media, 23, a Media 24 report, News 24 report of the 6th of September because they were given by Honorable Zungula and members of Parliament, which was not responded to. And they say this Mr. Mr. Hazin does not exist and it's not clear how the money came into the country. On the 8th of September, News 24 published a report confirming the existence of the same person. But the panel says because of the rules, they had to ignore what is in the public domain. The report of the panel still says they doubt if this person exists. But on the 8th of September, before the report was released, News 24 confirmed this person exists. They, this news, they confirmed that there was this process that was undertaken. And very recently, Sky News, just by the scratching of the surface, confirmed the existence of this person. How do we then adopt this report that did not conclude to get sufficient evidence to start the process to impeach a sitting president. The panel's report has set the bar too low to impeach a sitting president. The voting process then followed and the report was rejected by the majority of the MPs who belong to the ANC. No. Mandashe SG. No. Mbalula FA. No. Mkunu ES. No. Damini Zuma NC. As a disciplined member of the ANC, I vote yes. Order, honorable members, we have the results. Yes, those who have voted yes, 148. And those who have voted, who have voted no, 214. Abstain, hold on, hold on, honorable members. Abstention two. And therefore, the section 8291 inquiry will therefore not be proceeded with. Of the 45 ANC MPs who were expected to break ranks and vote to the opposition, only five actually did. It's Nkosa Zanatlamini Zuma, Mervyn Dix, Musebenzi Zwane, Supra Mahomapilu, and Tandi Maambe Shal. Even though she tried to change her vote after she noticed that the majority of the ANC MPs voted against the report. But better her than Lindu S. Sul and Zulim Kizi who cowered and chose to be absent during the voting session, despite being the two of the most vocal people against Ramaphosa, calling for his resignation, which raised a lot of questions about their bravery and readiness to lead. So the adoption of the panel report was defeated, and Ramaphosa with the assistance of the Chris Anika Pal won the day, and his path to re-election was cleared. Three days later, the conference started and right from the beginning, things got heated, as factional songs were very loud. For a moment, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was a choral competition. The two main songs that dominated the conference were Wenze Zuma, sung by Zulim Kiza's supporters, and Ramaphosa Rurata Gaufela by Ramaphosa's supporters. Hashtag Agabui was trending at number one on Twitter for two days straight, and from the videos that were posted, it seemed like victory was certain for Zulim Kiz. Kiza delegation, Zulim Kiza delegation, there are no friends no whatsoever, all delegates. All delegates, no friends here, no friends. Zerim Kiza will become the president of the Congress. 
But those videos were angled and so misleading that you think the majority of the delegates were anti Ramaphosa. But it turned out that only KZN and some Gauteng members were booing him and banging tables as he spoke. When Ramaphosa took to the podium to deliver his speech, he pleaded with the delegates to stop singing so that they could save time and finish the business of the conference. When the delegates were just getting quiet and Ramaphosa was starting with his speech, Jacob Zuma entered the plenary and the KZN delegates immediately erupted into a song all over again. Zuma also joined his supporters in singing. Ramaphosa's supporters responded with a song as well. It was at this point that Kwete Mandashe approached Ramaphosa and advised him to allow his supporters to keep singing and not stop them. Ramaphosa responded saying he wanted all of them to stop singing. <laughs> However, Ramaphosa gave Zuma and his supporters enough time to sing and sit down so he could continue with his speech. But the singing from the KZN delegates continued even after Zuma sat down. They tried to prevent Ramaphosa from continuing with his speech and Duma tried to stop them but failed. Kwetemandashe had enough of it and called for the security to remove them from the plenary. Sibonso Duma, the KZN chairperson, quickly went on stage to challenge Kwete Mandashe for calling a security on KZN delegates. The two had a heated argument in full view of the camera. Kwete Mandashe ended up telling Sibonso Duma to show leadership and control his province's delegates if he doesn't want them to be removed from the plenary. So Sibonso went back to the KZN delegates section and tried to calm them down and had a tough time doing it. <laughs> Going to this conference, only two presidential hopefuls had made it to the ballot paper. It was President Cyril Ramaphosa and Dr. Zuelim Kiz. Ngosa Sanatlamini Zuma and Indu Sisulu were still hopeful until the last minute. After the credentials were adopted, the nomination process started. Ngosa Sanatlamini Zuma was again nominated from the floor after she initially failed to meet the threshold before. But she declined the nomination and gave her support to Zuelim Kiz. Lindu Sisulu also did not meet the threshold to be on the ballot paper for the position of president. She was again nominated from the floor for the position of treasurer general and still failed to meet the threshold. I nominate Umama Ulindi Sisulu. And the name of Comrade Lindi Sisulu has been raised from the floor. Is Comrade Lindi Wei in? Do you accept nomination, Comrade? Yes. Thank you. Could we please have seconders for Comrade Lindy Wesi Sulu for Treasurer General? Thank you. The name of Comrade Lindy Wesi Sulu has failed to meet the threshold. So there was some last minute horse trading and betrayal that took place in the early hours of the voting day. And those who were on the fence finally revealed which camp they belonged. Then Matabata then noticed that he was excluded from the Ramaphosa slate. He and his deputy Florence Razilani tried to sue Limpopo's delegates to vote for Zulim Kizi, where Matabata was included as chairperson. And Matabata went to KZNPGC and promised them that the Limpopo support was secured.
Some Limpopo delegates they managed to convince came to the plenary the following day, singing a pro Ramaphosa song with altered prom Kize lyrics to show they have dumped Ramaphosa from Kize. Listen to this song from Limpopo. Ramaphosa is a rata ufela. Marari Ramari, it's a man this way. The song lyrics said, Ramaphosa, we love you, but we are going with Zueli. But not all Limpopo delegates had switched sides. The majority of them still supported Ramaphosa. Even the province's PC was divided on the matter. In this video, the Limpopo SG Rupen Matadze was telling the Limpopo delegates that their position and mandate to re-elect Ramaphosa had not changed. Since the Gauteng PGC, the province's PEC led by Panyaza Lusofi also tried to persuade its delegates to vote for Zulim Kizi. But they were not as outright with who to support for the president as they were with the position of Deputy President and Deputy Secretary General, where they supported Paul Mashatile and Nomvula Mukonyane respectively. But during the conference, Lebo Hang Maile from Gauteng PEC was seen making pro Zulim Kizi hand gestures, signaling a call for a change of leadership. Some Gauteng PEC members tried to directly tell delegates to vote for Zulim Kizi, but they failed as most delegates told them that they do not take orders and mandates from the provincial leadership but from their branches and were not going to betray the mandate given to them by their branches to re-elect Ramaphosa. So Stelma Tabata and Panyaza Lusufi promised KZN lies and were left with eggs on their faces. They thought they could do what they did in 2017 but failed. Dismally. But Ramaphosa's camp was not without its own problems either. The standoff between Ronald Lamola and Oscar Mabuyane, who were both in Ramaphosa's camp and eyeing the position of deputy president, threatened to sink Ramaphosa's ship altogether as the camp's campaign manager struggled to convince either of the two to withdraw. We we'll make sure that we take one, we, are, we stand a chance of getting what we love out Please. of that man. I repeat, not everything that we are saying here. Not everyone supported everyone who was nominated by yourselves, but you understood the bigger picture. Comrade, as a result of that, after engaging, especially in our situation, Kumalanga, engaging Eastern Cape, engaging KZN, we came to a view that we love all those comrades. Mm. But for singularity and focus, we propose that Comrade Oscar. Yeah. 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 Comrades, that is an outcome of a long process of engagement. We had to agree on a name. That is the name we've agreed upon. Now, all what we have to do is to appeal to you to actually support that. But eventually Ronald Lamola gave in and withdrew. Oscar Mabuyane became the camp's main candidate for the position of deputy president and lost to Paul Mashatile. But regardless of that loss, Ramaphosa's lead won big in that conference, beating Zulim Kize by more than 500 votes and winning five of the top seven positions. Only losing the position of deputy president and the position of first deputy secretary general. There is also a new position for the second deputy secretary general that was created to make sure that there is never another vacancy in the office of the SG, making Marupi and Ramakhope the first ever second deputy secretary general of the ANC. The numbers that we did get definitely says that there's a lot of confidence. The word on the street is that KZN was rejected because there's a sense that they are disrespectful, arrogant and tribalist. They always want a Zulu person from KZN to be president and they just add other people from other provinces to other supporting positions. But they are not compromising on the position of the president. So people like Senzo Mkunu and Mtumisen Ntuli were just collateral damage in punishing the KZN even though they do not subscribe to KZN destructive politics. Pekika let's talk about this issue here. That province needs to come together all of us whether it's Tele, whether it's Mkize, whether it's Nkosazana, whether it's Zuma, whether it's Mabuyakul, whether it's Mkuno to say 
<clears throat> let's deal with ourselves on this matter. It can't be all the time when we're going for national elections, the president, if it is not Zuma, it's Kosazana Zuma, if it's not Kosazana Zuma, it's Mkise. Why would be the province that can't see the leadership from other corners of South Africa? Indeed, the issue is with us here. That we did not get, I think we deserve it. The case that NANC is now isolated and most provinces are ganging up against them, given the fact that they are also declining and losing cases that end to the IFP, it is unlikely that the case that end representative will be in the top seven anytime soon. If they lose the province to the IFP, there will be no incentive for case that end people to remain or become members of the ANC in the province. And the majority of its members will cross the floor to join the IFP for positions, causing its membership in the province to decline and the case that end to lose its position as the ANC's largest voting block. If that happens, Pens, then this previous elective conference might have been the last where the KZN had the largest delegation. So within a space of a month, President Cyril Ramaphosa went from wanting to resign to being re-elected with an increased margin, much to the dismay of his detractors. This was too much for Omkal. He had no energy to fight his suspension and chose to resign. But Ramaphosa's opponents must not give up. It is just a matter of five years, comrades. Five years, comrades. Never give up. It's just a matter of five years, comrades.